Guys, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 18 through 22, these are words, this is a scripture that the world hates today. Romans chapter 1 is one of the most hated chapters in all of the Bible by the world today. And if you're not sure if that really is the case, I encourage you, go home and read the entirety of Romans chapter 1, and you will quickly recognize and realize why this chapter is one of the most hated chapters in all of the entire Bible. We're going to look at a portion of it today. It says, the wrath of God, the wrath of of God. Normally when we think about God and we talk about love, we talk about his love. Interestingly enough here, it is talking about and it is, it is describing God's wrath. It says the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven. It is being revealed. It is being recognized. It is being understood. It is being able to, to point at and say, look, there it is. The wrath of God is being revealed against the godlessness and wickedness of people. I want you to say those words. It is being revealed against the godlessness and the wickedness of people. A people. Now, which people? Who people? Us people? Which people? The wrath of God is being revealed against the godlessness and the wickedness of people who suppress the, the, the truth of God. And really, that's what the message is about today, about the suppression of the word of God. This wrath is against those who suppress the truth of God because of their desire to continue to do wickedness. And then their desire to do wickedness, they know that they can, can do more and more and more wickedness by suppressing the truth. And so they seek to suppress the truth, freeing up and, and making it easily uh, able to do the wickedness that they want to do. Now it goes on in verse 19, it says, for since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. Brian Hartman, if you're in the room, go back, turn my microphone down a little bit. I get the ringing, it's driving me nuts. I won't be able to focus. Again, verse 19, it says, since what may be known about God is plain to them. In other words, guys, um, you, all you have to do is go out and look, especially this time of year. All you have to do is go outside and look and you will see God's creation being displayed all over the place. And it's really the, the teleological, okay? That's a fancy word. I want you to say it with me. It's pronounced teleological, okay? So say it with me, teleological. Say it with me. Ready? One, two, three. Teleological. Again, if you are on Jeopardy and that's the, 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 the question that wins you all the money, Make sure you tithe on that. Um, but my point is simply this, and I can explain the teleological argument to you very, very simply as to the existence of God. Now, we just talked about a rocket ship that went up in the air on um, Friday. And the reality is Elon Musk wants to try to inhabit the planet Mars with humanity just in case something bad were to happen down the road. Doesn't sound like that bad of an idea to me. Why not? Let's see what happens, right? Don't sign me up. I'm not going. Uh, Marvin the Martian, by the way, we talked about this. Marvin the Martian, you know, he was from Mars. Um, somebody was asking me about his dog's name. Anyone know the dog's name? Nope. Anybody else? It was actually canine. It was, on, it was a flag on, the, on his tail. If you remember, it said canine on. That was the name of the dog. I don't know why I said that. It just felt good. So um, we're going to go to Mars one day, supposedly, right? Elon Musk. Now, let's say that we, we get a spaceship, and there's 10 human beings on it. And they go to Mars. And when they get there, they, they climb down off the thing. And they go someplace on Mars where the rove, rover, Mars rover, hasn't been. And when they go there and they're walking around, suddenly they see this beautiful oak and mahogany um, grandfather clock. 
beautiful with all the brass and everything else. I'll never forget when mom and dad bought their grandfather clock. You know, um, it has been in the living room ever since I was tiny, and it would go dong dong. You know how it how that makes the sounds and stuff. And so they're looking at it, and all of a sudden it, it's 12 noon. And it starts going, and you can do it with me. Are you ready? Dong, 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 dong. I'm not in pitch. Dong, 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 dong. And then it starts going bong, 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 you know, like 12 times. And the astronauts, they go and they look at their watch and they say, oh, wow, look, it's exactly 12 o'clock. You would have to be able to draw a conclusion, wouldn't you? By landing on Mars and seeing the grandfather clock. And what would that conclusion be? Somebody's been here before. Somebody who either has access to a grandfather clock or somebody who has the ability to make a grandfather clock. This grandfather clock did not just show up in the Big Bang. It did not just show up. They say that the likelihood, the likelihood, and what was really cool was Bethany and Mason, um, they're starting, um, you know, this week, or he's starting this week at, at the new job. When they were in Florida flying back after a five-day cruise, Lord help them and, and, and stuff, they were sitting there in the uh, airport, and they look out, and guess what they suddenly see outside the windows at the airport? A water spout, a big one. A big one. And it went all the way from the ground all the way to the top. And Bethany took a picture of it. If I was smart, I would have showed it to you. But uh, you can go on my Facebook account. I think it's there or not Bethany something. You'll find it. But here's the thing. A few minutes later, a few minutes later, a tornado came up out of it. And they were sitting there at the airport. Luckily, they didn't have to go and hide underneath the whatever they do at the airport. Guys, here's the thing. The likelihood, the likelihood, they say, this is, this is, this is anybody and everybody who says this. The likelihood of, you know, there being some kind of like big bang. And suddenly from the big bang, you get, you know, what we come to know as today as, as Earth is like the likelihood of two F5 tornadoes hitting the, and I always say the Sears Tower in downtown Chicago, but it's not the Sears Tower anymore. It's something else. But they say the, it's, it, it's, it's equal to the likelihood of two F5 tornadoes hitting the Sears Tower downtown, taking all of the building, throwing it up in the air, air as shrapnel, and then landing on the, the ground. And as a result of all the mayhem and the chaos of those two tornadoes, you would have two 747 jetliners perfectly ready to fly and ready to, to go and take off. Now, we say, that, okay, that's just absolutely absurdity. You can sit there and hit that building as many times as you want with tornadoes, and you're never going to get 747s. But the reality is, guys, in our schools today, people, teachers, all kinds of people are trying to convince and tell our kids of that. And there's a real, real, real big problem. It says in this verse, since what has been made known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them by the divine nature, having been seen clearly, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. We had a mama duck at our house. The mama duck you know, if it was a goose, it would have gotten shot, but it was a mallard. So praise the Lord. You know, it was a mallard, right? I don't like shooting animals. But this mama mallard sit there and got in our, our bushes in front of the house and built a, a nest and had eggs. Were there nine or ten of them, Amy? Ten beautiful, beautiful little purple or something colored, you know, mama mallard duck eggs. And she sat on those things and sat on those things and sat on those things for a long, long, long time. That's pretty amazing that that's how that works. Oh, well, that, that was just by chance that we would be able to reproduce that way. Are you serious? Guys, my allergies are atrocious right now. I mean, you know, I don't have hardly any voice. You should have, should have heard me in practice today. I, I couldn't even screech the notes because it was too early. The allergies are terrible. My eyes look like I'm like on something really, really bad. But the thing is, is God knows about this. And he knew about allergies and stuff. And so he created us with some really, really interesting things like eyelashes. Eyelashes. 
eyelashes which catch dust and pollen and all kinds of pollutants before it gets in our eyes. It cuts it down by like 90%. Are you happy for your eyelashes? I am so happy. Thank you, Lord, for my eyelashes and I, my eyebrows. And I just need to remember, like the doctor says, go and wash your face every now and again when your allergies are really, 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 really bad. Oh, but those eyelashes are there just by chance. Everyone go, now go like this. Take your hand, go, okay, even better, go like this. It's a flag on the play. That's a 15-yard penalty. No. Guys, all you have to do is look around. Do you think that we're in the end times in the last days? I don't know. I don't know. It feels like it, but the reality is I don't know. I'm not going to tell you that we are because the reality is, is I don't know. They thought they were when Adolf Hitler was running around like a madman blowing up the earth. Okay? They were convinced. Grandpa Kenny and, and Grandpa John and, and, and Grandpa Skaggs, I'm sure they were all thinking, ah, it's the end times, there's the Antichrist. And the fact of the matter is they were wrong. Is it the end times now? I don't know. It kind of feels like it. But maybe it's not. Maybe it is. But here's my point, if I can remember it. Um, seriously, if I can remember it. Um, I don't know. I, I normally say at this point, you live as though it's the last day. And, I, and I'm, I'm losing my mind. Let's go back to this. Maybe it'll come back to me in just a moment. Guys, all you have to do is look around. Look at the trees, the way they unfold, how they unfold. I have sycamore trees in my yard. I have like seven of them. I always thought I wanted sycamore trees because you have sycamore trees near water, and I wanted to be near water. Thing of it is, is the sycamore tree is the dirtiest tree that there ever, ever was. It drops stuff four different times a year. But the thing of it is, is it does so very, very wisely and smartly for itself. It knows it has to open up and drop like a, I don't know, like, like, a, like, like the skin shedding. And then it drops the seeds. And then it drops, you know, um, like something else. And then finally it'll drop its leaves. If any of those four things were not there, it would not be able to reproduce. It does so very, very smartly. Guys, um, it's close to me, but I can't quite get there. You have all kinds of scientists today. I think of Bill Nye, the science guy, who is like one that's so very, very popular, especially with our children. Do you think that's by accident? No. Do you think that Bill Nye believes in God? No. Do you think that he believes in creationism? No. Do you think that he believes in the Big Bang? He used to, but now he's struggling. We have a Hubble telescope that's up in the sky right now, still taking pictures, but we don't use the Hubble telescope nearly as often as we used to. Why? Because we have a new one. It's the James what? Do you remember? James Webb, I wasn't going to get there. It's the James Webb Telescope. Is the James Webb Telescope a million times more technologically advanced than the Hubble Telescope? Yeah, that's, I, I guess I should be careful with my blanket statements. Um, a whole lot more. Um, it does light, it does infrared, it does waves, it does like all kinds of different kinds of things. So you can see things. Do you know what the James Webb um, Telescope has recognized and has uh, produced information about for over six months now? The universe is not expanding. And every scientist knows it. Have you heard that? I wonder why. Do you think that the information is out there and available? Not easily. But you'll find it on the internet. Go home. Afterwards, take your nap. There's not an Indy car race on, and a NASCAR race won't be worth watching. So take your nap, and then Google, Google it, Google it. The new, the new telescope, and Google proof that the universe is not expanding. Even Bill Nye has acknowledged this. The problem is, is if you have a big bang, things continue to do this. They don't stop, and yet it's not happening. And yet we're not being told that. Certainly not in, by our teachers. 
The kids certainly are not hearing this. And yet, what you have is this continued, it's not like, hey, you know what, we're not going to teach the Big Bang because we're not really positive about that. No, they, they don't say that. They just keep teaching the Big Bang. We need to be careful. Um, by the way, none of this is in my sermon notes. So um, I'm hoping that I'm not going to keep you long. Let's focus and let's, let's move on. Guys, all you have to do is look outside. Look at the grasshopper. Look at the ant. Just look at the trees. There is no way. No way. The Bible talks an awful, awful, awful lot. From the very, very beginning, it says you need to be very, very careful not to be a fool. You need to have wisdom. And if you don't have wisdom, you need to pray for wisdom. Because if you pray for wisdom, God will give you wisdom. Now, the problem is, is there's a lot of people that are out there that are being fools. And you're going to recognize really, really soon as to why. Oh, thank you, my friend. You're going to recognize why, why, why today there are so many foolish people in the world. We will get to that in a moment. Here's the thing. Look at what it says in verse 21. For although they knew God. Now, that word knew is not very good Greek word for knew. Okay, it, 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 that Greek word for new can mean a lot of different things. This is what it really is saying. For, all they, for although they recognize there is a God, that's what it's saying. That's the literal meaning. Though they recognize that there is a God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him as God. That's the literal meaning for that Greek word. And then it says, therefore, or thus... Their thinking became what? Futile. Futile. Do you know what the word futile means? Um, it's not going to work out. It's not going to take place. If something is futile, it's like there is a, a plan, there is a purpose for it, but it's futile. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. It's going to amount to nothing. That's what the word futile means. It says, because even though that they knew that there was a God, they neither glorified God nor gave thanks to God. Because of this, their thinking became futile. And their what kind of hearts? Say it again. What kind of hearts? One more time, because you remember it if you say it three times. What kind of hearts did these people end up having? What kind of hearts? Foolish hearts. Their hearts became foolish Foolish. Um, their hearts were darkened. Their few, they, they, they became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became what? They became what? One more time. Guys, it has been truly astounding because the thing of it is I remember so much like 25, 30 years ago. I remember reading this verse and thinking this doesn't really make sense today. 25 years ago. Today it makes perfect sense. Guys, I think it has been truly amazing how in the past 40 plus years these verses have become so, so reality. And that is not to say that 50 plus years ago there were not those who suppressed the truth of God and instead chased after whatever it was that they wanted to chase after that was ungodly. Yes, that happened back then as well. But guys, 50 years ago, 50 years ago, things were as different as night is today. And what grieves me the most is that today, today, there are those who are in their 20s. If you are in your 20s, raise your hand, please. I have people raising their hand that are so not in their 20s. Raise your hand if you're in your 30s. Okay, I'm not going to go there, okay? Well, you, but you know what I'm saying. The reality is, guys, there are those today who are in their 20s and in their 30s and even those who are in their 40s who did not get to see with their own eyes the way America used to be. That grieves me immensely. I'm 53. I got in on the tail end of it. I got in on the tail end of it, but I saw it. And guys, do you think today seriously that the teachers today who are teaching our kids in elementary school and junior high and high school, 
Do you think that these teachers, along with the so-called historian todays, who are writing down how things were in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, and in the year 2000 and so forth, do you seriously think that they also, along with those who are producing television shows and movies that depict that depict, because this is like some of the most convincing stuff. If you see it in a television show like that 70s show, you know, then that's the way that it must have been. Or in some kind of movie or whatever else, then that, well, that's how it was. It was right there on my television. Guys, do you seriously think that all of these people are going to portray American history as it really was? And the answer is no, they are not. Do you think that they're going to tell our young people today that 50 years ago, 75% of Americans on any given Sunday attended church? They're not going to tell them that. Or do you think they're going to tell them that we were a godly Christian nation where you had the Ten Commandments in courtrooms and all this stuff? They're not going to do that. Do you think they're going to tell our children today how practically every single store and every single place of business was closed on Sunday, the entire day on Sunday, so that people could attend church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and then actually rest on the Lord's day? You know, in between, they're not going to tell them that or how there was practically no crime back then. I'm not saying that there wasn't any crime, but there was practically no murders or school shootings or substance abuse. You know, instead, people were happy back then. Do you think that they're going to tell our kids that people used to be happy instead of 80% of the people? I'm giving blanket statements again. I don't know what percentage, but a whole lot of people taken, I'm depressed. I'm this, I need medicine. All of these kinds of, do you think they're going to tell our kids that back in the day, practically everyone was relatively happy? They're not going to tell them that. Do you think that they're going to tell our kids that back in the day, prayer was in school, scripture was in school, it was commonplace on our television stations and in the newspapers and in the courtrooms and in our government bodies and legislation? Crying out loud, I remember so clearly going to Grassy Creek Elementary School for seven years. Yes, I was held back in fifth grade on my own choosing. But you know what? I was also on the dean's list for the rest of the time afterwards. But I sit there and I remember so clearly clearly Mr. Merritt would get on the air call. This is WORK now on the air. By the way, I hate to admit it, but I was like in fifth grade before I realized that WORK spelt work, you know, but anyway, so WORK, they had a radio station, you know, and, and on the radio station, they would tell you things like whether you were going to eat, you know, tacos, sloppy joes, or pizza, you know, for lunch. And they would tell you if it was going to be sunny and if the younger kids would get to go outside for, for playground, you know, and, and, that, and that sort of thing. But you know what they also did? Every single day there was a scripture reading. Every single day. The scripture reading today comes from Proverbs. And the thing of it is, is they would have kids read it. You would get to, you'd get to volunteer. I'll do the scripture. I'll do the prayer. I'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. They prayed every single... Do you think that's going to be told to, the, to our kids today? No, they're not going to tell them that. They're not going to tell them that. Do you think they're going to tell them that during the, the, the Christmas season and during the Easter season, every single time when, when Happy Days would go to commercial, either before the commercial break or at the end of the commercial break, there would be something like celebrating the birth of Jesus, Merry Christmas. Kyle, did you know that they used to do that? Celebrating our risen Savior, Happy Easter. Every single time, practically. It was all over the place. Do you think that people are going to tell our kids that? No, they're not. Guys, not only has all of this already been suppressed. Everyone say the word suppressed. Suppressed. Look at what it says there at the very top of the verse. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godless nonsense that's going on by godless and wicked people. These people who are doing what to the truth of God? They are suppressing it. Not only has all of this already been suppressed, buried, censored, 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 all of this going on today, 
any mention of the past is gone, not only are they doing that, but here's the thing that really bugs me. Really, really bugs me. They are trying to paint the picture of the last 40 to 50 years as some of the most vile, horrific time in American history filled with all kinds of atrocity, racism, ignorance, intolerance, violence, and hatred. Um, excuse me, I was there and it wasn't any of that. I mean, it wasn't perfect. Yes, there was some racism that was going on. Absolutely there was. But I'm going to tell you what, the racism that's going on today is a thousand times what it was back then. A thousand times what it was back then. I'll say it. Y'all can, can ban me if you're watching online, if you want, or whatever else. But it was a thousand times back then what it is today. Now, am I suggesting 50 plus years ago that there wasn't also violence, crime, shooting, and drugs? Yeah, you know what? There was, man. You can say hippies. You can say whatever else, marijuana, whatever. What I am saying is that what took place back then compared to what is taking place today cannot even be compared. The wrath of God is being revealed today, today, from heaven against the godlessness and the wickedness of people, people who are suppressing the truth, people who do not want to let our kids hear it, um, who, who, who make us feel horrible and guilty if we ever say anything you know, about Jesus in a public place. Get your Ten Commandments down out of your yard and out of the courtrooms and out of, you know, all, you know, whatever, whatever. For though they knew God, whatever, they, they claim to be wise, but they have become fools. Guys, they claim to be wise, but they have become what? This right here exactly is what is happening in America today and for the past several decades. And as Christians, how are we to respond? As Christians, how do we react to this? I'm going to tell you, listen, point number one, make sure you get it. We are going to respond this way. We as Christians must make sure that we learn, read, study, memorize, and live out God's word in our lives. That's number one. We have to make sure, regardless of what's going on around us, that we are doing this. First and foremost, number one. We are going to learn, I lost my place, but we are going to learn, memorize, observe, and do God's word all the time. Number two, number two, do you know what we're supposed to do number two? We absolutely better work tirelessly, and I mean tirelessly. We better be on overtime, double time. This is what we are going to be about. This will be the hill on which I die on. We are going to make sure that that same thing is being done for our children. That will be the hill I will die on. Don't mess with the kids. We're going to teach them about Jesus daily, daily. We, we are going to encourage our parents to, to, to know, recognize what it looks like to be godly parents, biblical godly parents, so that we are raising our kids up in the Word, knowing the Word, studying the Word, memorizing the Word, living out the Word daily in their lives. Somebody say amen. And, and, likewise, we are going to make sure that we do not shy away from telling and letting everyone else know about the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. Looking for every opportunity to share our faith and the reason for the joy that we have and the success that God blesses us with and the peace that we have and the love that, 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 that is evident, that, that is different than anything else that they see in the world around them. This is what we are going to do. This is what we are going to be about. But here's the question. How, Pastor Jeff? Those are some big things. We're going to memorize the Bible for ourselves. We're going to teach our kids. And then we're going to go out and we're going to share the faith with other people. How are we going to be able to do this? Especially that last one, Pastor Jeff. How are we going to do this? Because people are always getting dogged on and everything else. And how are we going to do this? And I'm going to tell you very, very plainly, guys. We are going to do this with, are you ready? We are going to do this with love, joy peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
That's how we will be successful in winning the people that are around us, that are lost, broken, miserable, dysfunctional, screwed up, messed up, getting divorced, angry with their kids, losing their jobs, addicted to pornography, messed up on alcohol, all of this kinds of brokenness. This is how we are going to be. Where are you, my friend? You need to be a lot louder than you are. This is how we are going to be successful in doing this. We are going going to have love, joy. Now think about these words. We're going to have love in us when we do it. We're going to have joy in us when we do it. We're going to have peace in us when we do it. We're going to be patient with people when we do it. We're going to do so with kindness. We're going to do so with goodness. We're going to do so faithfully. We're going to do so with gentleness. And we're going to do so bad. Lord, help us with self-control. Okay, and those don't come easy, especially if your last name is Gammon and you happen to be a male. And if so if God can do this for us, he can do this for you. But guys, do you recognize what these attributes are? Do you know what they are? Somebody tell me, I'm not giving you $5. You, you just knowing where this comes from is enough. What are these things? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What are they? They are fruits of the what? The what? The Holy Spirit. Interesting. Because isn't that what we started talking about last week? Guys, this is the only way. If you are trying to do it on your own stuff, then you know what? You're going to fail. You're going to get flagged. You're going to get backed up. You're going to get sacked in your own end zone. If you are trying to do this, hey, I'm going to do this, and everyone's going to look, and they're going to say, wow, look what, look how, how, wow, look what. No, no, no. That is not this church. If you're looking for that church, it's not here. I think it's down in Texas somewhere. Okay, Lord, forgive me. But um, mm, 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 don't let me go there. And you know what? I, I need to go there one day. And I will go there one day. I will go there one day. All right. Um, man, we could stop right there, couldn't we? No, thank you. Wow, where on earth am I? Guys, why do you think that there is such an incredible effort to suppress the word of God today? Why do you think that there is such an incredible effort to suppress the truth of God, bringing about the kind of depravity, the kind of brokenness, the kind of dysfunction, the kind of evil, the kind of darkness, the kind of division, the kind of hatred, the kind of animosity, the kind of rebellion, and the kind of godlessness and evil that we are seeing in the world taking place today. Why? Why do you think that there is such an incredible effort to suppress the truth, bringing all of these horrible things about? Jesus' closest disciple, this is my opinion, if you want to say, Peter, that's fine. You can think that. You'll be wrong, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, Jesus' closest disciple, John, was so very, very clear. This is why I love John. If I had a third kid, the kid's name would be John. No way around it. It would be John. Even if it was a girl, I'd probably name her John. I don't know. John was so clear regarding the influence of the devil and the Antichrist. And first John, this is throughout John's gospel, this is throughout John's letters. First John chapter 2, verse 18 says this, Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. If you skip down a little bit more and you go to verse 26, you'll find these words. I am writing these things to you about those who are... Now, here's, here's, here's the big, big thing. I am writing these things to you regarding those who are trying to lead you astray. Because in the last days... The Bible says that even many who are within the church will be led astray. The Bible says that. And those are scary, scary, scary words. The Baptists don't like it. 
they won't preach that, those passages. But it's reality. It's all over Scripture. Now, guys, the Greek word for antichrist is a very interesting word. In fact, you see the Greek word there. That's basically spelled A-N-T-I-C-H is the X. The P is actually an R. I, that O with the tag is an S. That's a T-O-S. It's antichristos is the Greek word for that. And it literally means two different things. It can mean against Christ. But more often, the way that it is used in the New Testament is instead of Christ. Instead of Christ. Now, that'll make sense, I think, more as we look at this. The plural, the plural. He says in the verse that we looked at just a moment ago, you know, that there are, yeah, there is the coming of the Antichrist, but already there are many Antichrists, plural. The plural has to do with those who take the focus off of Jesus, and instead claim that there is a different way which people should live. More to the point, they say that, they they say, oh, come on, Jeff. More to the point, they say that Jesus isn't the Christ and that you should listen and obey and follow what they have to say or what somebody else has to say but not Christ. Today, we have news media all over the place, all over the place. And they're saying, you should listen to me. Tune in to Fox 59, and we will tell you everything you need to know. You know what's crazy is that's actually their theme. Those are the words. Tune in to Fox 59, and we will tell you everything that you need to know to, to get your day off and going. That's what they say. I don't need to hear anything, anything, anything. Mom, please stop watching that. Come on, stop. All they do is they fill your head full of crap. And yes, I did say crap, okay? But that's really what it is. Be lucky I didn't say the other word because you know what? I mean, anyway, it's, I don't care what these people have to say. I have one teacher. We need to be people of one teacher. Mrs. Riley, the greatest teacher that ever lived, in her class, both years that I was in her class, opened my eyes and told me about Jesus and said, Jeff, you feel like you are a failure and that you're just going to turn out to be absolutely nothing. I see it. She had no idea about the thoughts that I was having about going out to the bridge way back behind our house, this 35-foot tall bridge, and just jumping off and floating down the river because I felt like I was dumber than than the the, the dumbest idiot that ever faced the earth and that nobody liked me, could like me, would ever want to like me or anything like that. And she said, no, I love you. God loves you. God wants to do amazing things in your life. Jeff, you can move on to sixth grade, she said, but if you want, take fifth grade over again. You could be in Mrs. Pratt's class. If I took fifth grade over again, there was no way I would would take fifth grades again unless I was in your class. Take some time, pray about it. I told her yes, but I still had the option to say no, and I went to camp, and I heard God say to me the exact same things that she said to me. I took fifth grade over again, and suddenly I was making A's. And been making A's pretty much since. And yet the world would sit there and want to tell me, well, you're messed up, you're dysfunctional, you're, you're this, you're that. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're, I'm, I'm just going to say, I mean, people, people, can, can, people can turn, can switch off the internet and whatever else and, and not watch me anymore. But today, oh, you got problems going on in your life? Well, maybe you're gay. Maybe, you're, maybe you should be transgender. Maybe you should this. Maybe you should that. Anything and everything other than, anything and everything, guys, say it with me, anything and everything other than, you know what, maybe you just need Jesus in your life. In fact, let's just take out the maybe. You, you, you need Jesus in your life. Mrs. Riley, who was a Christian, she did not have a problem or an issue sitting there saying that to me. Nor did Ken Lewis, nor did other good godly teachers that God put in my life. There's two different definitions. Instead 
or against. So many people are, you don't need Jesus, you need this instead. Soon there will be a whole lot more people that will be saying against. And you know what? There already are against. Because I can tell you right now, and Brother Carl said it to me the other day, he said, you know, Jeff, if people actually were watching online, we would have people picketing in front of our church on Sunday mornings. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And you know what? There will probably come a day when that will happen. And do you think that we will shy away from telling the, the truth? No. On Wednesday nights, we started talking about how the church will be hated in the last days and that Christians will be persecuted. Those days are coming. Those days are, are now. It's happening. And I'm tired of trying to be politically correct. I want to be Jesus correct. And I want to make absolutely sure that our children are Jesus correct. Come on. First Peter, verse 8. No, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, be alert. By the way, I'm giving you passages that you should memorize. Moms and dads, it's never too early to start helping your kids memorize Scripture. Teach them John 3.16. Teach them what it says in Romans chapter 1. Oh, and I'll tell you what, though they will be hated, you know what, boy, they will be rich in heaven. They will be among the greatest in heaven. And I'll tell you what, you know what, you don't need popular kids in this world. You don't need popular kids in this world. Come on, parents. You don't need popular kids in this world. Raise a child in the way they will go, and when they get old, they will not depart from it. Those are the kinds of children that you need. 2 Corinthians chapter, oh, did I not say it? I guess I didn't. 1 Corinthians, you uh, already changed it. First, got to go back. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be alert and sober mind. The enemy, the devil, prowls around like a what? That's kind of freaky scary, isn't it? Yeah, like a roaring lion looking for people to devour. And then 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Do not be surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And there are all kinds of people um, in all kinds of places of leadership saying, hey, listen, you need to listen to me because I'm going to change your life. And they are angels of darkness disguised as angels of light. There are pastors all around our community, even here in the greater um, city of Noblesville and Hamilton County that are, that are they, and they know it. They know it, and they have placed themselves there to be, you're saying, no, Jeff, I really don't buy that. You know what? Take a closer look. Take a closer look. You know it, don't you? You've seen it. We see it already. Some of you all know. Some of you have already been coming and talking to me. I, I can't go to this church any longer. I, you know, as another church, I, I, I'm looking for a new place. Because they refuse they would rather be politically correct than Jesus correct. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Especially when people start pointing fingers and start getting nasty and start throwing rocks through our, our church bus. Hmm. 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 So how are we to stand firm? How are we to stand strong against such opposition through the power of the Holy Spirit? I'm going to ask the question, you give me the answer. What's the answer? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, here's the question. So how are we to stand firm and stand strong against such opposition? You need to remind each other. You need to remind me, and I will remind you. And we will do this. This is what the church is. This is what the church looks like. I want you to look. One last scripture. We'll, we'll wrap it up. I've got all kinds of time. Just don't look at your watch. Um, John chapter 14, real quickly, verses 15 through 27. These are Jesus' words. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now what to look for because there are two things that I'm going to point out here. Do you want to know what the two things are? Number one is this. If we are going to stand firm and do well in the last days, which we may or may not be, it doesn't matter, we should be standing firm and strong anyway, even if these are not the last days. The people needed to stand firm in the face of Adolf Hitler way back when and whatever else and before that, whatever. It doesn't matter what era we are in, we are to stand firm because, you know what, there are people that are falling to the wayside all the time, not just in the last days. We must have the empowering help of the Holy Spirit. This is a must. 
only through the empowering help and the strength of the Holy Spirit will those within the church stand firm and not be moved. Do you remember Jesus' Sermon on the Mount? My favorite passage, my favorite set of scriptures in the book of Matthew. That's why Matthew is named Matthew, my kid Matthew. Uh, it's because of the Sermon on the Mount. That's why I named him that. Do you remember how Jesus closed his Sermon on the Mount? There were two men. One was foolish and one was wise. The foolish man built his house on the sand. The wise man built his house on the rock. What is the rock? The rock is Jesus. The rock is Jesus' word. Those two things. How are we going to stand firm and not get crashed when the waves come and beat up against us? We absolutely must have the empowering of the Holy Spirit in us to remain faithful and to live obedient lives to him. That's number one. But here's the scary thing. How do we get the Holy Spirit? Well, you accept Jesus Christ in your life and you get the Holy Spirit. Everyone go, uh-uh. Oh, I got people questioning me in that in their minds right now. Uh-huh. Well, all I know is next week we're going to look at a bunch of people that accepted Christ in their lives and the Holy Spirit didn't fall on them and Paul had to show up and had to have a little talk with them before the Holy Spirit fell on them. So don't tell me, just all you have to do is ask Jesus into your life. There you go. Dad, there's some good homework for you because my, my dad's wheels, I can hear it. His wheels are going, Z -Z 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 -Z. is that really? Is that right? I got to check that out. And I love that. My dad will check it out. I mean, my dad does not, does not just, just buy into, just because his son says that he's a pastor doesn't mean that he's going to buy. He'll sit there, he'll push back on me all the time. I love it. I love it. Good for you. You're looking into it. You look into it. But I'm telling you, just because you accept Jesus Christ in your life doesn't mean you're going to have the Holy Spirit fall upon you. Because I'll tell you what, all you have to do is read Paul, and you'll find out that there were people that accepted Jesus Christ in their lives, and the Holy Spirit did not fall upon them. Now, if you look at this, or when we look at this, you're going to see a whole bunch of ifs. If, then statements. If this, then that. In fact, there's four, no, five of them in the passage. You can see if you can find them all. The first one's right there at the beginning. If... Well, there you go. That's an if-then statement. Causality, that's what that's called in English, you know, Bible, you know, if you go to Asbury, Dr. David Bauer. If you love me, you will keep my commands. If you love me and if you keep my commands, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Pastor Jeff, is the spirit of truth and the, and, and the Holy Spirit the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely they are. Now, I don't know. The Holy Spirit has all kinds of attributes, including truth, including power, including this, including that. But is that a reference to the Holy Spirit? Everyone say yes. It is, absolutely. If, if this, then you'll get the Holy Spirit. You can, you can argue with me all you want. You'll see it five times here. You'll see it five times here. You can come at me, send me, send me the emails and the questions. I'm glad you're questioning it. I'm glad you're looking into it. Should I add that these are Jesus' words? If you love me, keep my commands. If you do these things, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because the world neither sees him nor knows him. They don't know him because they aren't obedient to Jesus' teachings. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. How is Jesus going to come to us? He's going to be up in heaven. How is Jesus going to come to us? Jesus is going to come to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, on that day, I wonder what day they're talking about. Could it be the day that you receive the empowering of the Holy Spirit? That would be a great answer. On that day, you will realize that I am with my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands hmm, and keeps them, uh-oh, uh-oh, that's pretty big. I mean, that, that, that's, I mean, it just says it right there. You, you can go into court of law and you can try to, to, to change what these words are saying, but 
I'm sorry, it says very, very clearly on there, whoever has my commands, whoever knows my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father and I too will love them and will show myself to them. How will he show himself to us? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Next slide. But then Judas, now there were two Judases. There was the Judas Iscariot, the bad guy, but there was another Judas, unfortunately. He's like, dude, were you the bad guy? No, I'm not the bad guy. That was this other guy. He was replaced. One of the disciples, not Judas Iscariot, he asked Jesus, he says, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My father will love them. Now, this is the third time he's saying this, right? My father will love them and will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words that you hear are not mine. These have come from the father, from God above. Even though I am the Son and I am God, he wants to make sure he's clarifying that. Verse 25, all of this I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Hey, I'll give you that. No, I'm taking that back or whatever else. It's not like how the world gives. You know, the Lord will give to his faithful people. Say the word faithful. He will give to his faithful. To those who are not faithful, to those who are out there living for God one moment and living in the world the next, he will not give. He just won't. And so why do you think that many who are in the church will fall away in the last days? Because you want to know what? Many people who are in the church in the last days are living for God one moment, but living in the world the next. I speak truth. I speak the word of God. These are not my words. To those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. If you are being obedient and faithful to the Lord and you are living a righteous life before him, you have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to fear. If you are struggling with, 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 with sin and you're back and forth and everything else, you know what? You're not alone. You're not alone. Man, we all struggle with sin. Cry not loud. I had to work myself up into a frenzy, Dad. I made sure that Amy went into that store where I got the glass to stand in beside me because I usually do better when Amy is with me than when I am by myself. I have to make my body my slave. So that after I have talked with other people, I will not be disqualified from the prize. Because while I was talking to somebody, I could have lost control, been mean, lost my um, witness. You know, as a Christian, as a pastor, giving Jesus a bad name to that person. Oh, my lands, he was an idiot. He's a pastor, a Christian. I don't want to be a Christian because look at that idiot. Instead, when I walked away, that guy said, wow, we really, really did him wrong. And yet he was really cool with us. And that's what happened. That's what happened. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's see here. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Thank the Lord. I had the power of the Holy Spirit with me, and I kept some self-control. This is what we're going to be about. This is who we are. This is what we teach. This is what we need to remind ourselves, each other, about. We cheer each other on towards the prize. Amen? Oh, you guys are good. Thank you for sticking with me.